Grab your phone boots and glasses, everybody, because today we're talking about character redesigns. The good ones, the bad ones, and the downright ugly ones. And if you're new here, hi. I hope you enjoy yourself. So when discussing redesigns, there's something important you always have to keep in mind, and that's that not all of them happen for the same reason. So for this video, I want to talk about the four most popular ways characters get redesigned. And just note, I do use four examples for each section, two good ones and two bad ones. But I'll leave a disclaimer before each section if you want to skip that specific part. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now for the first one, just to get us started, we have quality of life redesigns. Now what that means is that a character's design was changed due to either behind the scenes limitations or advancements that ended up impacting the look of the story itself. For a good example, we have Puss's design from The Last Wish, which was thankfully changed due to the advancements in animation from the last movie being a long time ago, giving him a larger hat, a cape, and much more expressive eyes, all of which, while subtle, certainly paid off in the end. And if you thought those changes were small but effective, they have nothing on Naruto's design all the way back in the very beginning where he used to wear goggles, not a headband. Turns out, the only reason the headbands became a thing is because drawing the goggles was too time-consuming. Flash forward to today, and the headbands are one of the most iconic design aspects of the Naruto world, with nearly every character wearing one at some point or another. Speaking of flashing, moving on to some bad examples, we start out with the Flash. No, not that one. Now, although this show gets criticized for many reasons, it's almost always been on point when it comes to the Flash's outfits. Emphasis on almost. Because in Season 5, right after the show had gone through possibly the most beloved version of the suit, the apparent upgrade to it was this. This suit was absolutely clowned on by fans. The helmet looked too small, there was hardly any yellow, and most notably, the lack of a chin strap just did not look good. And although the reason they ditched the strap was because it would be easier for Grant Gustin to remove the cowl and move his neck, that still doesn't make up for the sheer goofiness of the design. Thankfully though, the criticism was heard, and in Season 6 we got yet another beloved version of the suit. However, for my second bad example, coming from a movie, it didn't get the luxury of trying again. I'm talking about the Taskmaster from Black Widow. And where do I even begin? How about the fact that this is not the Taskmaster's design that people love? That guy has a cool mask, a cape, and a hood. This character, whom I've nicknamed Toastmaster, has none of those things for the sake of... Realism. And you know what? That was actually a plausible excuse. It really was. Until I saw Moon Knight. And look at that. Mask, cape, and hood. Only one year later. Now, maybe his design was changed to avoid looking too much like Moon Knight, but that's just a theory of mine. Film, dear. No, no, sorry, no, this doesn't deserve it. Also, why did my voice crack so much? So yeah, now we're stuck with Toastmaster, who's apparently coming back next year in Thunderbolts. Yay, he said sarcastically. Next up, we have evolution redesigns, which differ from what was originally there, usually a sign of a large gap in time or a change in circumstances. For a good example, we have Season 6 Deku from My Hero Academia. As you can see, his suit has been through some tough battles. The colors have all faded, it's ripping apart at the seams, and the mask looks like something straight out of a horror movie. And when coupled with one of Deku's powers, Black Whip, it becomes one of, if not the most haunting design in My Hero Academia. And what I like about this new design is that it doesn't just look cool as hell, but it visibly tells its own story. A story of someone who's been through more than anyone ever should be, and it's slowly but surely taking their toll on them. But that's enough My Hero for now, because up next, I have the one you've all been waiting for. The man, the myth, the legend who canonically said he would fire God if he could, Seto Kaiba. In season zero, he was rocking the green hair in futuristic tire, which was referenced by Noah in the next series, Duel Monsters. There, he starts out in a dark green and purple attire, giving off some huge don't talk to me vibes, while his next and most iconic design is a combination of the two, looking both futuristic like his season zero design, while keeping and improving on that edge factor he had in season one. And that just keeps going with his final form in Dark Side of Dimensions. And it's there where he's completely dripped out in his own tech like a cyborg, ready to duel anyone, anytime, anywhere. And just in case that's not the kind of fight you're looking for, Kaiba and his now very visible muscles are more than ready to go send you to meet the Pharaoh in person. But now, moving on to the bad, we start out with American Dragon, Jake Long. Now, I'm gonna be real with y'all, out of every example in this video, this is the only one that I have no personal attachment to, so just keep that in mind. However, one of the main things I do know about this show is that Jake's Season 2 dragon design was very controversial. 
going from a more European dragon look to a more traditional Chinese-inspired dragon. And the difference is not subtle. See the different colored claws, larger hair, and most notably, the extra skinniness. Now, while I don't think the design is bad, I can understand how confusing it must have been for kids watching to see a brand new Chinese dragon for the American dragon seemingly out of nowhere. And to my knowledge, they never outright explained the change in the show, which probably didn't help people's reaction to it. But speaking of never explaining things, that brings me to my next bad example, William Afton. Now, if you don't follow the FNAF lore religiously like I do, then worry not. All you need to know is that this guy from FNAF 3 is known as Springtrap, and his iconic look is a result of him being trapped in a mascot costume for 30 years. Don't ask me how he's still alive. But for a while, that was the last we really saw of him, until he came back in FNAF 6 looking like this. And after the initial hype was over, people from all over the FNAF community came together to share their absolute hatred of this new design which came to be known as Scrap Trap. With his newfound buck teeth, massive misshapen head, and lack of an arm, he looked way too silly to be known as the main villain of the entire franchise. And although his design did improve as both Glitch Trap and Burn Trap, although some people hate those two for a different reason, neither of them ever reached the icon status that Spring Trap did. But if this means that Afton never has to come back again, then I think I'm fine My with leaving house. him here. Don't leave me here! <laughs> My house! Thirdly, we have the race swap, where the main part of the redesign is a difference in skin color. Now, for this section, I'm actually going to start with the bad examples first and then work my way up to the good ones, as this one seems to be the most misunderstood category out of the four. And when looking for examples for this one, I did not have to look far, as probably the first thing a lot of you thought of was Velma. Well, surprise, surprise, as it turns out, this dumpster fire of a show provides a masterclass in what not to do when race swapping a character. Specifically, lazily changing nothing design-wise but the skin color, as well as being blatantly disrespectful to who they were for over 50 years. And since talking about this show is getting my blood pressure to dangerous levels, why don't we move on to something less infuriating? Oh, come on! From the dumpster fire to the radioactive swamp, we have The Last Airbender. What a movie. You know, for a project based on a very diverse series and directed by a man born in India, this movie really did diversity in a really bad way. And by that, I mean changing Aang, Sokka, and Katara to be white, and changing the entire Fire Nation from somewhere in the range of Japanese to being a mix of India and the Middle East. Now, while I don't think this was blatant racism, you gotta admit, a trio of white people taking down an evil nation led by brown people doesn't exactly sound all that great when you say it out loud. Thankfully though, there are at least some good examples of race swapping to wash out the bad ones. Case in point, the one who gave me the idea to do this video in the first place, Lois Lane from My Adventures with Superman. There, she was changed from white to Korean. But unlike Velma, this show respects the former iterations of Lois and doesn't try to discredit them just to seem superior, while also keeping the same core traits of who Lois Lane is as a character. She's headstrong, she likes to be in charge, and she uses risk-taking tactics to get the truth out. That, in my opinion, is how a perfect race swap can be done. Also, Lois is really hot. Another show that perfectly does this is Rise of the TMNT, which should not have ended. Please support the fan campaign to bring it back. Also, maybe like and subscribe if you've gotten this far. But in this show, April is the subject of the swap. And while the previous version's April has a very strong hate group, which I'm personally not a part of, Rise April is consistently one of the most entertaining characters in the entire show. With her awesome moments of badassery, her hilarious arc of never being able to keep a job, and her adorable relationship with Splinter and the Turtles, she absolutely stands out from all the other April iterations in the best way possible. And finally, we have the rebooted design. Here, the basic gist is that the character's new style is just because they're a completely different character compared to who they were before. And if you've been paying attention, you'll have seen a lot of that already mentioned in this video. But just for good measure, let's go over some extra examples. Firstly, for the good ones, is Rogue from X-Men Evolution, who went from a colorful skin-type bodysuit to a more basic black and green uniform. Change the hairstyle and makeup, and suddenly you have yourself the often nicknamed Goth Rogue. Now, the reason for this change was that, much like many of the other X-Men in Evolution, Rogue was being changed from an adult into a teenager, and the character designer, Steve E. Gordon, felt that the traditional look was too sexualized and unrealistic, so he settled on the goth aesthetic, due to Rogue's sheltered and isolated lifestyle. And heck, if the character's popularity is anything to go by, then I'd say that he made the right choice. And if you want to know more about X-Men Evolution, check out my last video where I talk about my favorite trope in superhero shows. But now for our next good example, we have Link's design from Breath of the Wild. This game was a phenomenon in the gaming community. People are still playing it constantly 
consistently to this day. Not only that, Link's new design in the game was so iconic, it ended up being the default costume for him in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And according to the developers of Breath of the Wild, it was the result of around a hundred different costumes considered for Link. And while the iconic green was expected, they wanted to do something different, blue being the final color choice because it ended up making Link stand out from the rest of the world. And speaking of standing out from the rest, we have our first bad example, the Joker from 2016's Suicide Squad. And you know what? Sometimes I just feel bad for Jarrett Leto. He had hands down the worst live-action Joker portrayal, and if that wasn't enough when he tried to do a different comic book character, that also completely flopped. And then I remind myself how awful he was on the set of Suicide Squad, and that eases my mind a little. But just speaking about the design itself, I believe that it is the embodiment of why less is more. Because when you compare Leto's design to all the other Jokers, you can see that it had by far the most complex design. One with all the tattoos and accessories, you could really see that they were trying to make him as cool as possible. But in the process, they ended up having the opposite effect. Especially when a bunch of the extra details make him seem more obnoxious than intimidating. See his damaged tattoo, smile mouth, and grill. And finally, my last example, Dante from DMC or as a lot of people like to call him, Dante. And right away, you can see the two biggest differences, the hair and the coat. And after watching the what happened on this game, which you should totally check out, the reason for the change was, and I quote, if Dante dressed as he was, walked into any bar outside Tokyo, he'd get laughed out. However, what was even more interesting to me was a comment made under the video that stated, Dante would not give a single frick, which is why he's so cool. And you know, I think that's exactly the problem here. They wanted to create the coolest character ever, but they took away all the charm that made him so cool in the first place, just making a Diet Dante or Dante Light. He didn't need to be all brooding and complex because that's just not who Dante is. He's a goofy ass and people love that about him. So even if the design was the same, it wouldn't feel like the same character. And honestly, I think that's something shared throughout all the designs good and bad. A redesign may anger people initially, but if you stay true to the character and the story, slowly but surely people will warm up to it until eventually there might be a brand new generation of fans who grow up recognizing your redesign more than the original. And if that does happen, then you'll know with absolute certainty that you did good. But that's all from me this Halloween. So until next time, goodbye.